Are you ready, Seth? Romans 7, 14. For well, we know the law is spiritual. This is Paul talking to the church. Romans. The law is spiritual, but I'm carnal. Sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent not unto the law that is good. Thank you, dear. Now that it is me no more that 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 do it. Okay, watch the next one. But sin that dwelleth in me. And uh, Paul goes on, and he'll do a little bit more with that. For I know that, that there's nothing in me that's in my flesh, there was no good thing, for the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, or not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Not if I do that, I would not. It is no more than I to do it, but here again, sin that dwelleth in me. I find that law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. I'm not talking about your mate either, okay? All right, so mm -hmm. stop looking at stop looking at your mate. All right, that's not who it is. All right. Bright delight in the law of God. After the inward man, the spiritual man wants to know more about God. But I see another law in my members, inside of me. War, there's a big war going inside of me against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity the law of sin, which is in my members. Remember, he said, sin dwells in me. Every time I do something good, evil's present. Right. He comes to this conclusion. He said, oh, Wretched man that I am, talk about Paul now, the apostle that wrote most of the Bible, when I started more churches, I don't know who could be, amen, he went out there and people got saved under his ministry, and yet he says, I'm a wretched man. Mm -hmm. Who's going to deliver me from, from the body of this death? So we see in verse 14, we know that the law is spiritual, but uh, I'm a carnal. Right. He said, uh, Paul says, you know, most of the time I want to be spiritual. Amen. I will never God. Amen. He said, but I'm carnal. Amen. Carnal just means flesh, fleshly, sensual. Paul says, I've been so to understand. Sin's bought me. Sin owns me. Uh, at the same time, I do not want to sin. But sin dwelleth in me. Amen. It's already in there. Right. Well, that which I do, I want out for what I would that I do, but what I hate, that do, that do. You say, Richard, what does that mean? Paul says, when it's uh, time for me to read my Bible, my flesh will say, you know, that TV show you like so much is on, probably on right now. You can probably watch a rerun of that. Why don't you put that Bible down? Mm -hmm. When it's time to pray, your flesh will say, Man, you, don't you feel tired? I mean, I feel tired. You should feel tired. Let's just go to bed. That's the way your flesh is. Your flesh will say, let's watch a movie. Let, let's play a game. Uh, when it's uh, time to meditate, uh, time to go to church, any excuse is a good excuse. Amen. Because yeah. sin dwells in you. Mm -hmm. Evil's always present. When you're trying to do right, you hit a say, 
Not tonight. Mm. Not tonight. And I've been working so hard today. I just don't know if I can really handle that old man's preaching one more time. Mm. I, I, I think I'll just take the night off. Mm. I'm going to take the night off. Mm -hmm. Amen. When it's time to tie, when it's time to get admissions. Your flesh will scream bloody murder. You got bills to pay. You got things you want to buy. You don't need to be giving your hard earned money to God. Why? Evil is always present when you want to do good. You want to start writing that check? Evil will be right there. Say, don't do it. Don't do it. Hmm. Amen. That's, if, as soon as you take out that wallet, that's why it says in the Bible, Jesus said, don't let the right hand, uh, right hand know what, you know, the left hand, the left hand do the right hand. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. 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 You know what it says. You know, don't let one hand know what the other hand is doing. You say, why? Because sometimes you got to pull out your wallet. This hand better not figure it out because if it doesn't, it's going to tell you to put it back. Amen. Put it back in your pocket because you don't need to be spending no money. Especially for just God. Especially for just the church. Don't do it. Evil will tell you that. Sin will then you will tell you that. Don't do it. But not do it now. Jesus, sometimes you can't even let yourself know what you're doing. Mm. Now, if Jesus gives you that advice, amen, that means there's two of you. Oh. Amen, you're bipolar. Oh. Some of you are <laughs> tripolar. Some of you, there's about 10 different personalities there, 20, amen. Uh, and what was that movie that had all them people that were simple. simple, amen. Some of y'all are simple, say, I mean, there's 20 different personalities there. We don't know who's going to come out. You could be kind and gentle, the next thing you're screaming and hollering. We don't know why. <laughs> Jesus said, well, I can tell you there's at least two of you. You better hide what you're going to do from yourself. Mm. Why? Because evil's there all the time when you want to do good, and, and uh, sin dwelleth in you. Time to go on visitation, do something you forgot. I'm tired, I'm weak. The older you get, the better the excuse sounds. I was in Israel one time and somebody dropped something over the banister. We're, sit, we're up on a three, four story tall building and the tour guide jumped over and grabbed it. Came back. He didn't look at me. I said, how old are you? He says, I'm 85. Did you know you're only as, probably as old as you think you are? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, some of you got, you know, physical conditions, and I can understand that, but that didn't stop that old man from jumping over that banister at 85 years old and acting like a teenager and grabbing them keys or whatever was dropped on the other side of the banister and jumping right back. Hmm. But your flesh will tell you you can't do that for God. Hmm. You ain't got time. You ain't got talent. You ain't got no money. Hmm. And you ain't got no business doing any of this whatsoever. Hmm. Hey, hey, I, I tell you this, not only is evil present there when you do something not only is sin dwelling in you, but the devil, if he sees you starting to do something for God, he'll do everything he can to try to stop you. That's how you always know you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. You'll always know you're on the right track and doing something for the Lord because the devil will try to stop you 100%. Mm -hmm. So there you are. You want to read your Bible. You want to pray. You want to go to church. You want to give. You want to witness. You want to help out. You want to live the Christian life. You want to walk for God. Amen. And, and, and that's the way Paul was. He wanted to do something for the Lord. He wanted to tell somebody about the Lord. Did you know that you can walk outside? 
anywhere. I don't care where you live. I don't care where you work. Did you know you can go anywhere? And there's people there. I don't, it's hard to believe. <laughs> How many of you actually talked to somebody this week? And I mean, you didn't make a purpose to do it. You just happened to be there. And you just told about Jesus. Have you noticed that? Amen. You know, we're supposed to go out there and do it. And we're, you know, you'll go to the restaurant, you'll go to the grocery store, you'll go wherever. Amen. Thousands of people everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you know what? What your flesh will tell you, that sin that dwells in you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And what evil will say, uh uh. Come on, man. We got we got, we got, we got, we got commitment to do it today. We ain't got time to talk about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, everything in the world that you want to do right for God, there's going to be, for every opportunity to tell somebody about the Lord, He will be there, sin will be there, and occasionally the devil will show up if you actually really mean it. He'll even show up. Keep you from doing what the Lord wants. Amen. And uh, Paul said in my mind, I'm going to never forget all the way. Amen. He said, uh, I, I made up my mind, I'm not going to sin. He said, the only problem is, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. And he says, every time I won't do something right, I made up my I'm going to do right. That sin that dwells in me and that evil is present keeps me from doing what I was supposed to do, which was supposed to tell that lady across the uh, sitting beside me about Christ. Hmm. So I didn't do it. I didn't even bow my little head in the and said, Lord, would you at least help this poor little woman? Looks like they need Christ. I'll have that problem. He'd be invited. I want you to come over here. I want you to go over there. I need you to go over here. I mean, this was a very popular preacher now. Amen? You know what that popular preacher said? No, I ain't going. It's too far. You said, you ever done that? Many times. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't live in Georgia. Amen? I ain't going to California. I ain't going to Arizona. Are you crazy? I ain't going to Columbia. You want to go where? I ain't going. You say, why? Hmm. Because inside of you dwells sin, and he was always present when you want to do good. Hmm. Paul says, there's times in my life I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. I know this is the right thing to do, and yet I still don't do it. Hmm. Hmm. Now that, that's pretty beautiful, amen. amen. When Paul said he failed, that would give you a little encouragement. Because mm -hmm. I don't think there's one person in here, including myself, that's as spiritual as Paul. Right. Amen. amen. I, 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 I hate to pop your little bubble, amen. I doubt very seriously if you're as spiritual as Paul. Paul says, I got a problem. I want to do right. I want to do right. Amen. I want to do right. Like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But I don't know what to do right. Hmm. I don't know what to do. And he blames two things. Hmm. He blames those two things. Now I can see even further. You won't like this at all. Paul says things I don't want to do. Now see, everybody has Paul on this huge, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? He way up here. Pestle, way up there. Big word, pestle, way up there. And then my 
uh, old English churches, they would have a row. And you would walk down this row, and in the middle, you would sit. You would have your pulpit 30 feet above the ground. And people on the front seat would have to turn around and look at you. So you want to sit on the front row, you want to sit on row 30. That way you didn't have to break your neck. Because he always, the preacher was always 30 feet above everybody else. Hmm. Preaching the word of God. Everybody has Paul on the pedestal except for Paul. And Paul says, there's times I know it is wrong for me to do this. It's evil is what he calls it. Did you read that part? Read it again. Amen. He said, it's just plain evil. It's sinful. I don't want to do it. I done made up my mind I ain't going to do it. I done told myself I ain't going to do it. He says, but I wind up doing it anyway. Paul was a man. I know he's an apostle. I understand that. I'm not taking anything away from his, uh, amen, his apostleship. But he was a man. And he admitted the problems he was having right here. It's hard for a man to really just come up clean and say, you know, there's things I shouldn't be thinking about. I let them dirty birds come in there. And I didn't chew them away. I didn't say, go away, little dirty bird. I let them put a nest right there on top of my head. <laughs> he said, there was times, amen, I saw things that I wasn't supposed to be looking at. Now, Paul was not married. He, he had made himself pretty much a eunuch. You know, he wasn't a eunuch, but I mean, he made himself like, uh, you know, I'm married to the gospel. So. And uh, he basically just said, listen, uh, there's things I shouldn't have been looking at. And I saw him. I had a preacher one time tell me, he apologized to me. He says, I want to apologize to you. And I said, well, why do you want to apologize to me? He said, well, he said, I made a compliment about your wife and how pretty she was and, and I shouldn't have been saying anything about that, but I'm sorry. I didn't think nothing about it, amen. You know, the most beautiful woman in the world, amen. <laughs> hurt my feelings one bit, amen. But in his heart, he felt yes. right. he'd done something wrong. Yeah, amen. Did you get that? Amen. He's, in other words, he took one little bit too much glance that he should have taken. Right. Yep. He said something that he thought was just plain wrong, and he had to get right. Yeah. Amen. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul said, there's stuff that goes in my mind that you have no idea mm -hmm. that the great apostle Paul is thinking about. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. And I don't want to think about these things, but how's it doing? There's things I shouldn't be saying. But I was looking. There's things that I shouldn't be hearing. But I was a hearing. And then he blames sin. It's because sin dwelleth in me. It's because when I do good, evil is always present. We invited this young couple. They looked like they were going to come to church. All the problem was, we did the stupidest thing. We invited them to our house to come eat. You said, well, that don't sound too dumb. Well, we had a good meal. Well, the problem was, it was our house. And the restroom door, and always lock. And 
next thing you know, somebody's opening the door, and you know, the little wifey's in there, the other husband, and you know, and then I try not to hug ladies at all. I, you know, I, I used to be at one time, I don't even, I didn't try. Now, I pretty much have to, and because and the reason I do is, because if I don't, and I put my hand behind me and try to back away, it seems like instead of getting a hug, I get a whole lot more. And some of you men will understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Amen. Which I don't want. Right. I, I, I'm just telling you, if you're going to do right for the Lord, Amen. Don't beat yourself up, amen, because that's what Paul's done. He's beating himself up. Oh, wretched man, who's going to deliver me? He's at that point. He says, things in my mind, things that I see, things that I hear, things that are touching me. I shouldn't be touching him. It shouldn't be touching me. He says, I sin. I sin. And I don't want to. I made up my mind. I put it in my heart. I put it in my soul. He said, but yet, I still wind up doing it. I want to do right, and I want to do it. I don't want to do it. I want to keep away from sinning, and I wind up sinning. He said, no wonder he said, oh, wretched man that I am. You think you can live the sinless, perfect Christian life? Well, good luck. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. You're going to fight that stinking flesh till the day you die. And your flesh will not want to die. It's not like you can just sit down and say, okay, I'm ready. Kill me. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Your body's not going to let you. It's going to fight for that last breath of air. The very last breath that you take, you will struggle to get it. Amen. Because it is not in your nature to die. Mm -hmm. God made it that way. You have to be ungodly and away from God to commit suicide. I mean completely gone from God. Well, it's a mental condition for you. You don't understand. You mean the guy that has a couple of million dollars in the bank, has a fame, you know, he's famous everywhere, and got good health, got children, got family, got all kinds of stuff, and, and then still kills himself? I can't remember the woman's name. She died in the hotel, committed suicide. Her daughter, years later, same thing. Where did you Same thing. Mm. No God. No peace. No joy. Mm -hmm. See, when you're at the slowest point of your life, and if you ain't been there, I hope you never get there, but if you ever get there, where you can say like Paul, old wretched man that I am, you better start grasping for air. And you better grasp for God. And you better get your hands up. You better get to start to praise Him. You better get to start to thank Him. Because there's going to be times in your life that you want to do right, but you didn't. Man. You you didn't want to sin, but you did. Man. And then you get to the point where you say, "Well, you know, I, 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 I just don't see the point. I just can't get this thing right. I just can't get it right." 
But but it's not you. It's that stinking sin that dwelleth in you. And when you are doing right, it's evil that's right there beside you. So there you are, come to church, smile on your face, Bible in your hand, you read your Bible, you pray, and guess who shows up? Evil shows up. Mm -hmm. Every stinking time. And I wish I could tell you, well, 99% of the time you're going to do right. But Paul said, oh no, I'm a wretched man. I'm a wretched man. You want me to tell you why? I better give you a hint. Come on. Hebrews 12, 1. You won't believe this. Hebrews 12, 1. Whereby, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let, a, let aside every weight. What's a weight? That's something to keep you from running and doing your best. Amen. Amen. I don't care if it's your business. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's a vehicle. Or, uh, you know, your great beauty or whatever else you want to call it. If it's a weight that's keeping you from giving 100% to God, it's a weight. It's not a sin. It's a weight. You say, why? Because the next verse says, every weight and sin. So there are some sins that can keep you from running your race and running the best that you can. Not only is there a way in the sin which does such, such easily beset us. Beset. That's called besetting sin. You know what a besetting sin is? Something you do over and over again. You're running your race, and you say, I'm going to jump over this, this little puddle right here, and I'm going to make it because I'm a running my race for Christ, and boom, you fall down. Mm. And then you're running your race, and I'm going to jump over this little puddle, and boom, you fall down. Mm. And then you're running your race, and you say, I'm going to jump this little puddle right here, and boom, you fall down. It's the same stinking sin that you've been doing for the last five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty years, fifty years. However long you do it, it's the same one. You almost act like a Catholic. Because you keep saying the same stupid sin over and over again. Lord, I don't want to do this no more. Help me from doing it ever again. You know what happens? It's a besetting sin. It's right there. You do it over and over and over and over again. Now the good news is, you're going to say, Lord, I don't want to do this besetting sin no more. Maybe God will give you grace and, and it'll never happen again. Or, the bad news is, it could back, come back to haunt you again. So there you are on your one millionth try. We're going to use a big number, okay? <laughs> You're a one millionth time. You don't count it every time you've already done this. You come to one million, you say, Lord, I quit. I can't quit, amen, doing this same stupid sin over and over and over and over and over again. I keep getting right. I keep saying I ain't going to do it again, and for the millionth time, I done did it again. <laughs> or you can say, Lord, I don't bore out that verse. It says that we'll confess our sins. You're faithful to forgive us. Faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So I don't wore this thing out, but I need to use it again. Because I need you to forgive me. Because this besetting sin, we go ahead and name it to the Lord. Uh, it's keeping me from what I want to be. And I feel 
I feel wretched. I have no idea how I'm going to live with myself. Now, if you have never come to that point, you have not hit what Paul has hit. Where you just say, can I do one thing right? Can I do something good? Can I stop one sin? Just one! I'd like to at least just have victory over one of these suckers, amen? Uh, and I have a victory over doing one good thing at least. get to that point, you become wretched. And all you can do is come to God and ask for grace and mercy and forgiveness. And God will give it to you. And say, yeah. What do you think? You're perfect? What do you think? You live on a pedestal? Is that what you think you are? The perfect Christian? Mr. Christian? Mrs. Christian? You think you're perfection? No! You're not! You're going to have to fight that sin that dwelleth in you all the time. Paul gets to the point where he goes crazy. He goes, you're going to have to mortify that flesh. He said, what are we going to do? Mortify it. My English ain't that good. Can you explain mortify? Kill it. You want me to kill myself? Yes, spiritually. Take a spiritual dagger and stab yourself until you kill that evil person that keeps coming out of the grave. You say, I don't believe in zombies. You're one of them. Paul says you got to kill that zombie over and over and over and over and over again. At least you wind up in this condition of being wretched. You say, how often does this condition happen? Well, the good news is it don't happen a whole bunch, but the bad news is it does happen. And it may happen more than once in your life. It could happen ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times, ten thousand times. A hundred thousand times. A million times. God's grace is sufficient. I'm no longer under the law. I am under grace. Do you still feel bad? You feel wretched. You feel hopeless. I can't do good. I know I'm supposed to do good. Why am I not doing good? I know I'm not supposed to sin. I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. Why am I doing these things? Well, you're a human being. And if you're saved, sin still dwells in you. You say, well, where does Jesus live? Maybe he lives right down in your soul. Where is this sin? Boy, it lives right down in your heart. The heart is deceitful above all. And who, who knows it? I can tell you who, do, who, who knows it. Uh, you don't know it, amen? Amen. You don't know that you're desperately wicked. Your heart's desperately wicked, but thank God Jesus lives down in your soul. <coughs> and if you allow it to infest <coughs> you and beset you, you'll get to that condition Things are never <coughs> going to change in my life. Well, I'm going to tell you the good part about that. No, God will never stop loving you. Amen. No, God will never stop giving you grace. He'll not never stop giving you mercy. You're his child. He don't care how many times you screwed up. He still loves you. And he still cares about you. He doesn't care how many times you struck out. Well, I've been a fat every time. Every time I strike out. He don't care. 
The balls always come to me and the sun always gets in my, you know. child. You're a special child. God wants you to run the race. He'd like you to win. But he don't care if you come in last place. I mean, three days late, he'll still be cheering you on. Yeah. He's still there saying, I love you. These are my children. I don't care what they did. I don't care. Should we try to do better? Yeah. Should we try to stop sinning? Yeah. Paul says there's a war inside of me. The law of the mind. I got to bring it into captivity. And the law of sin. There will constantly be a war inside of you. One part of the war will say, you don't have to do that. That's good, man. Do, do something. That's the way the house do it. Sin, hey, God loves you. Go ahead and do it. You use your own words. You use the preacher's words. You're, you're special. You're God's child. Of course, he's going to let you do this. Evil's evil. Right, amen. They tell you everything you want. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then when you do it, then it'll ridicule you. Why did you do that? You did better. Right. But you're the one that told me to do it. So you were the dummy that listened to me. <laughs> That's evil. It'll make fun of you. It will mock you. It will mock you. Oh, you knew you were supposed to read your Bible. Why didn't you read your Bible? You told me I was tired. I needed to go to bed early. Oh, so you couldn't spend five minutes with God, huh? I see how spiritual you are. <laughs> I mean, evil will mock you. Evil's going to mock you either way. So what do you do? Well, you know the things that do right. Ain't nobody got to tell you. Right. You know things, all the things you ain't supposed to be doing. I'll do them. But when you do, and it seems like you're on a roll instead of having uh, all your prayers answered, and you're on a roll. I forgot what they call it in playing 21, you keep busting out, you always hit 22 or higher, you always lose. No matter what you do, you're on a roll of just losing one time after the next. And you've been on a losing streak forever. That's what happened to Paul. He's been on a losing streak for a long, long time. And he finally just said, I'm a wretched man. I'm a wretched man. But then he goes on when he asked the Lord when he was having eye problems. He prayed and said, Lord, would you, you know, fix my eyes? Pray to me. Pray the third time. My grace is sufficient. Three times he asked, you figured if anybody was going to get the prayers answered, it would have been Paul. You'd be charismatic. I mean, he wasn't that good charismatic because, I mean, he couldn't just pray it in. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you know, I want to be healed. He was a horrible charismatic. Paul was. But he did say, my grace is sufficient. And God's grace is sufficient even when you get to this point. Get to that point, you can just look up. There's no place else to look. Look up and remember how good God is to you. Amen. And you can promise God everything in the world. The world is, I ain't never gonna do this again. Uh, and that's 
what you said the last 2,000 times, all right? <laughs> but you can't say, no, Lord, I'm your child. I really don't want to do this again. But there's just something inside of me. And I keep screwing up. Would you help me? And there's things I want to do. And I've tried 2,000 times. I just can't seem to get it right. Would you help me? He's the only one that is still hope for the wretched man. Y'all went and fed all them people last night out there at the homeless. People were grateful. And they were about as wretched as you can get. That's how wretched you can get inside, spiritually. When you get to that point, you got to ask, now, Lord, would you please pray for me? Because I, you know, I can't even pray for myself. Holy Ghost, would you please pray? By the way, the Holy Ghost knows what you need. Sometimes you don't even know what to ask for. So you say, please, Holy Ghost, would you please pray for me? It's called a yearning when you get the you're just a moaning and a groaning, amen. You have no idea what you're saying, amen. You just ask, you don't even know what you're saying. God don't know what you're saying, but the Holy Ghost does, and He translates it and turns it into words that God can understand. And God understands it and says, I hear. And they need help. So when you stop believing in your, when you get to that point where you're a wretched man, you stop believing, I can't get things, I can't get it any better than my Christian life than I am now. And I sure can't pray to make it better. Why don't you ask the Holy Ghost to pray for you? Help me. And God will flood you with that joy and that peace and that happiness. Amen. be long after a few more chapters we'll see Paul back on his right back right on track there's going to be bumps in the road be ready for them. you know and it just feels like it's just not worth getting up again that's when you're going to have to ask God will you please help me get me back up Holy Ghost, would you please pray? Because I, I feel so, so wretched. Help me. Father, we love you. I pray, God, you touch the message. In Jesus' precious holy name. Amen, amen, amen. We made it through.